Hi, this is Hannah Crafter here at Fanciful Spaces. No front on intro here today because this video was long enough and I just couldn't figure out how to shorten it down better. Um, so this video is for plaid paints as well as for Rita Bearcat. This is part of the blog hop that's going on. If you haven't checked any of it out, please hop into my blog link in um, bio where I give, uh, sorry, link in the description where I give more information. All right, so this is an altered paintbrush paint palette sort of project. Um, the pal paint palette was um, wood colored. So I based it out with two coats of Folk Art Titanium White Paint by Plaid. And then I did a, a glaze of the Dragonfly Glaze Gold Red Violet Shift, also by Plaid. It adds a little iridescent, a lot of shimmer. It's super duper pretty. Um, yeah, I loved that stuff. So here I am doing washes of the folk art color shift paints. Um, I wanted to do a rainbow um, pattern on my paint palette. So what I did, and I wanted them evenly spaced. So what I did was I took a piece of paper, um, laid it underneath my paint palette, divided the paper up in roughly equal segments, and wrote down which color was going where. You can see I sort of lined up my paint palette um, accordingly. And this made sure that I didn't have like giant sections of one color and maybe no sections of another color and potentially even skipped a color. Um, so it's just, the piece of paper is just like a road map, if it were, uh, to lay out my color and make sure everything works well. So what I'm doing is I am laying down the color shift paints uh, and diluting them a lot with water and then using that water to move the color. I'm also using my heat gun and my paintbrush to help move the color because I wanted a really fluid, organic look. I love those paint drips from that orange um, from the orange color. That's actually red flash, I believe, up there with those really pretty drools down. So that was sort of the look that I wanted to have. I also was very cognizant that I didn't want to cover the whole thing in paint because I needed the contrast. I didn't want to like negate any of the white or the uh, gold red violet shift by the in the dragonfly glaze. Uh, without those, that white area, the color just wouldn't pop. There wouldn't be enough contrast. So while I'm diluting my paint and running it into my paint palette, you see sometimes I'm removing some of that paint. And that's just so that I have different color depths going on, different intensities, and I'm ensuring that I have some of that white paint. You uh, will see here coming up, well, I think I did it in the red shift flash, but I'll do it again later on on one of the other steps, the pink flash, after all of my painting is done. I go through and I add another layer just because the color wasn't as intense as I wanted it to be. And since everything was dry and this is acrylic paint, I can really easily just go over everything and I don't have to worry about any of my color being removed like you would if it was a watercolor, for example. The acrylic binder in the paint helps keep those um, paints that you water down to stay where you want them, assuming you don't over dilute it. It's not rocket science. It's pretty easy. You'd have to add a lot of water to over dilute it. One of the things that I noticed when I was doing this was the green flash paint, uh, as well as this purple paint, had a lot more intensity. Um, it's a plum flash. That's the purple paint. Had a lot more color intensity going on than some of the others. And that's another reason why I went through and did a second coat on some of the different layers was just to help bring that intensity back forward. I also, I'm super sad that I covered it all up, but in the areas where I applied the paint really, really thickly and left it dry, like puddles of paint drying where it wasn't very diluted, when I heat dried everything, you're doing it really, really fast and you can get cracking, which may or may not be what you wanted. And I loved it in this project. It allowed for a lot of texture to happen. And if you were to, um, 
I don't know, maybe rub some wax in there, some colored wax, or even some black paint and then buffed it off, you would intensify the appearance of those cracks, which would make this even more cool if that's what you were going for. Um, overall, having that contrasting layer wasn't what I was going for, but it's definitely a technique to keep in mind if you wanted something a little bit grungier or with a little bit more depth. While I super loved the texture that I got from drawing that paint, in the end I covered it all up with the flowers. So a little bit of paint wasted, but you know, it's all good. So this is the Mod Podge Ultra Spray On Glue. Um, it comes in a couple of different sealer levels like gloss and matte. You can just spray it on and it negates a lot of paintbrush marks which I super loved. It's an amazing sealer or finish. So the gold thing in the heart, that's a stamp from um, Art Foamies. It's designed by Rita Bearcat. It says, follow your heart. And I stamped that first on a piece of white paper, actually my roadmap from earlier. And I used that as a guide to help cut out a heart that I was going to layer that on top of. And I used that as a guide to help figure out how this was all going to lay out. So I, you know, stamped it, let it dry, cut out a piece of paper in a heart that was relatively similar. And um, now I'm just going to build up that heart system. You could see the vellum from cutcardstock.com. It's super thick, but it allows a lot of color to shine through. It was really pretty. So here I am. This was the most um, agonizing and difficult anxiety layered um, steps was the gluing down. I cut out like giant swaths of time where I'm futzing with these flowers and the paintbrushes trying to figure out where everything was going to go. And when all is said and done, you just have to start gluing eventually. And it's so scary to make that step. So I started with the paintbrushes because everything I wanted to do was revolving around the paintbrushes. And then I went through and I'm gluing my flowers down. The centers of the flowers are actually some upcycled fake pearl necklace beads. Um, I found them in my local upcycle store. I said, hey, these are pretty beads that'll work. And upcycling is better than buying new because we don't need more waste in the world. So I cut them off and I put them in the centers of my flowers. And the whole process is so backwards because you're going to see in a few steps how I put some silver glitter in the center of the flowers in order to um, help build the image of those flowers up. And I really should have done that early on, like before I even glued the beads down, maybe. Live and learn. I didn't. So this is some silk ribbon that I have. I bought some raw silk ribbon off of Etsy and um, periodically I use it a lot. And every time I use it pretty much, I'm dyeing it with some Lindy's sprays, which incidentally is how I colored my flowers. So um, when I have excess ribbon, I just chop it off. And even if it's like an inch or two, I save it, never knowing what I'm going to use it for. And lo and behold, this was the perfect project for it. I did have to color a couple of strips of ribbon, but most of this is just bulk waste that I had from previous product projects. And I'm just tucking the silk ribbon in behind the flowers and hot gluing it in to keep it safe or to keep it stable. Um, I really love the extra texture that it added. So here I am going through, I'm, I'm using some Nuvo Deluxe Adhesive. It happens to be one of my favorite liquid adhesives that I have. It dries clear um, and I think it dries matte as well. And it's what I'm using to adhere my Mirror Ball Pure Sheen by Nuvo Glitter. Again, super backward step. And thankfully, I have that little brush surface sweep by Tonic Studios. It's probably one of my favorite tools in the craft room. I use it all the time. And it is allowing me to remove some of the excess um, glitter because slowly I did it while I had a lot of layers on. And that meant that I had a lot of places for glitter to hide like a goofball. 
I'm using the same Nouveau Deluxe Adhesive just to randomly sprinkle some um, sequins around. These sequins are also from Tonic Studios. I believe that they're called Silver Rain. And I'm just haphazardly sticking my sequins down. The one thing I don't care for sequins when I use them is I don't like the hole in the center. So I almost always disguise them. And here I am disguising them with some Nouveau Drops just in the center. And again, I'm keeping that rainbow feeling. By having the silver in the center of the flowers and the silver down below, like these um, sequins, and then doing the Nouveau drops on top of this silver, what I'm doing is effectively hiding a distinctive line between color and silver. I'm bridging those two worlds and I'm allowing my your eye to flow through the whole project a lot more seamlessly. Um, it's a kill two birds with one stone sort of process. So um, it created a much cleaner and finished project by bringing, melding those colors and that silver together. These are some um, clear colored bauble stones, um, pebbles or raindrops. Um, you can find them all over the place in a bunch of different stores. These specifically I have from Ink Road Stamps and they come in several different sizes and I love them. And let me tell you why I love them because they act like a microscope. When you put them over paint or a brush stroke or anything with texture, it's going to magnify whatever is underneath there once the glue is dry, assuming you use a clear drying glue like I am. And it's just going to add more pow and pizzazz as well as making that um, line clear because it looks whitish or silverish depending on how the light is shining um, along the edges because they're concave convex, sorry, and those edges catch that white. So again, I am melding those two worlds and adding a magnifying effect to the, the droplets. Um, there is literally no rhyme or reason for where I'm placing things. I am making sure that I get them underneath the flowers. Many people might not notice them. However, if you're looking at it from an angle, you might absolutely notice. <laughs> so I'm just trying to create a bunch of different layers and um, make everything look seamless and professional. And while we're on that subject, when I painted the the glaze, the color shift um, paints rather, I made sure I colored, painted the edges of my paint palette. That was when you wanted to do it to make a more finished and complete looking project. So um, I could have sped up all of that, but I felt like that step was where all the magic happened because I could use that step with those little baubles to create the shape around the paint palette that was happening. And I I super fast forwarded that section for you, but I wanted to include it in its entirety so you could see how much that adds. So we're going back to the heart. This is on top of some curious uh, metallic paper from cutcardstock.com. It's their quartz color. It's kind of a shiny white. And I am embossing with Rita Bearcat's um, embossing powers from Emerald Creek along the edge to provide a finished look for it. It's a two-step process, this embossing powder. You want to put the thick, clear, it's an iridescent color first, and then you can color it. You can add um, your color your colorant, which is this gold embossing powder, to the top of it. And you don't have to use your Versamark multiple times. You just heat up that embossing powder and dip it in while it's still hot. And boom, there you go. So using some less expensive cardstock, I actually built up, I think, like five layers of that same heart because I was going to hot glue it all onto the top and I didn't want any warping. So this is a different set of hearts than the one that you had just seen. This is just the base structure. And here I am making sure I hot glue it all in place so that it's secure and it's not going to move. And then in the areas where there's overlap because, you know, there's no paintbrush underneath all of it, I'm just building up this re foam reinforcement system. I would have preferred to have used white foam, but I didn't have any white foam, so I felt like blue complemented everything. And it was like, I think the foam required five stacks worth of foam glued together in order to get to the level of that first highest paintbrush. 
So I'm just going through and, you know, making those little stacks and gluing them in once they're dry everywhere where that heart needed some extra secure um, foundation behind it. And then I'm going to go through with some... Um, score tape. My mind is, I don't know where my mind is. Then I'm going to go through with some score tape and I'm going to secure the heart that had all of the embossing on top of this platform. Um, and here I am just weaving through some silver embroidery thought floss. I think I used, um, two or three strands, you know, a, a, a bit of embroidery floss is six strands thick. And I just took one or two of them, maybe three off, and I'm weaving them in and out and sticking them everywhere. So this glue stick, glue tube that I'm using, um, is not branded on the side. And I could have sworn at the time that it was Gina K Connects Glue. But then when I went to do my research, all of her glue was branded. And maybe this was before that or after that. I don't know. But I loved this glue. I used this on the vellum to adhere the vellum to the piece of paper. And you can't see any of the glue marks underneath it. It's magical. And I wish to goodness I could tell you what it was. If you have any of it at, in your crafting area and you know what it is, please tell me in the comments. Because I need, like... A gallon more of this stuff and to be able to replace it. I super duper loved it. So once I get that top part with the embossing on, then I'm going to use the glue to adhere the vellumed um, stamped image. It's um, vellum from cutcardstock.com and I stamped with um, some of the folk art treasure gold paint by plaid. I use that for my art foamy stamp to stamp it on vellum. And this allowed my image to extend past the heart a little bit. And it also um, gave me a risk-free play space. If I had messed up on the stamping, I didn't have any other embossing to worry about. And I could have just tossed that if I had messed up. Um, it was really hard to read the sentiment in the stamp with the um, gold paint and all of the activity going on here. So I went through with a gold marker and I tried to fill in some of that. And ultimately I go in later to do some white highlights and some blue shadows in the stamp just to help that texture, that, that sentiment pop even more. So I thought I was done and I wasn't, it just wasn't fully complete. It needed some more gemstones. So I haven't the slightest idea what these gemstones are because I have like so many um, all around, but they're these little, um, they're probably from Little Things by Lucy or Lucy's Little Things, probably from them. Some clear and white gemstones that I am attaching. Um, the tool that I'm using, my crystal katana, I have three tools that basically do the same thing, and I couldn't find my crystal katana through most of the project. By far, it is the best tool for this. I got super frustrated with the other two. And when I finally found my crystal katana, the world got a lot better, and I was happy. So that's my project. Please make sure to visit my blog so that you can see all of the rest of the projects and all of the links. And I thank you very much for watching. Have a great day.